NASA and SpaceX launch four people on board the Endurance SpaceX Dragon capsule to the International Space Station. Take a look. Four, three, two, one. Ignition. This mission makes history as astronaut Nicole Mann becomes the first Native American woman to fly into space. She's also the first woman to command a SpaceX mission, and this is the first SpaceX mission to also include a Russian cosmonaut. Astrophysicist and science educator Hakeem Alushayi joins me now for more on this. Hakeem, thanks again for joining me. This mission is a collaboration between SpaceX and NASA. We've got astronauts on board from the U.S., Japan, and Russia. So how significant is that, the collective nature of this? You know, it's incredibly significant, but let me point out a, a little factoid that we haven't talked about, and that is, is that for two decades, America was not able to send its own astronauts up to the space station. We had to hitch rides on Russian rockets. And now, here it is, we have a Russian hitching a ride on an American rocket. So what this tells me is that America in crewed space missions, we're back, and we're back in a big way. Uh, Kim, they're hoping, the crew's hoping to arrive at the International Space Station tomorrow at 5 mm -hmm. p.m. Eastern. What are you looking out for as they dock, and what excites you most about what they'll be working on once they get there? Yeah, so I tell you, what the experiment that I, I really uh, am cluing in on is a couple of them. One is, is that, you know, when we talk about the hazard of radiation in space, and, you know, there's other things you have to consider. NASA has an acronym, RIDGE, which stands for radiation, isolation and confinement, distance from Earth, different gravity environments, and hostile environments. Um, and so part of it is mitigating the hazards by, for example, having technologies in the craft you're traveling in and also in the suit. But another big thing is measuring the biology of the astronauts in real time. And so one thing that they're doing on this trip is they have a new wireless technology that is in the spacesuits. It makes measurements and then sends that data back to the craft in real time and they can go to the ground. So, you know, the best way to handle a problem is to foresee the problem and deal with it ahead of time. And the other thing that's really exciting is, you know, we saw the movie Ma The Martian where, you know, uh, I forget the actor's name, but he grew food on Mars using his own human waste. Matt right? Damon. Matt Damon, that's right. And the, and the big problem is, how do you grow food when you don't have the earth to plant it in? And so what they're doing is they're looking for hydroponic methods of uh, growing food in space and also doing this in zero gravity, right? Plants regulate their lives just like we do based on cycles of sunlight, based on the gravity field that they're in. So going into space changes everything. So you need to really understand what you're doing if we're going to do this bigger and have a lot more people in space. Now, you talk about a lot more people in space. SpaceX's larger goal is essentially to establish space tourism. They've already yeah. sent some civilians into space. They want that to be a much bigger thing. NASA wants to, once again, put a person on the moon. So yeah. how are they building the foundation for these goals? Well, every step of the way requires a new level of infrastructure, right? Just going up, so you have, for example, Jeff Bezos' rocket. It's a sounding rocket. It goes up, it comes back. You don't, stand it, you don't stand in orbit. Then you have going into low Earth orbit. Then there's going beyond. So if you look, for example, at the radiation environment, in low Earth orbit, you're inside of Earth's magnetic field. And so that helps protect you from galactic cosmic rays, which are very difficult to screen out and which are very damaging to our biology. But those very same magnetic fields have particles of radiation trapped within them, right? And so between our, you know, there's also from the sun, you have a lot of radiation. You have the, 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 the radiation in our magnetic field, the radiation from the sun, and galactic cosmic rays. So as you go out further, you are subject to more and more of this. And so you have to have methods of dealing with this. And so what we do is we first test without humans, right? So if we look at NASA's Artemis launch, they're sending up mannequins that are, um, you know, 
they have sensors all over them to measure the radiation environment in real time. So there's so much in the details of what you have to deal with that goes from your biology to your mental state to dealing with other people. You know, I'll give you a story. Once upon a time, I was looking for a roommate many, many years ago, and a good friend said, hey, let's do it, let's be roommates. And I said, no, man, because I don't want to hate you, right? If you live with somebody in close confinement for long periods of time, it can be rough. And we are looking, talk about close confinement, we're looking at some live shots there from inside the capsule. We just lost the live shot, but when you, when you look at the way, there it is again. Yeah. When you look at this and you think about all of the science that came together, oh, we see, look, one of the little trinkets looks like a little doll there of some kind floating around, no more gravity. When you think about all the science that came together for this moment to happen, what goes through your head? Oh, yeah. And so, you know, it's a combination of science and engineering, right? Us scientists, we come up with the fundamentals, and then the engineers make it reality. You know, and I've worked in both. And I tell you, my very first job after I got my PhD was working as an engineer. And once I started engineering the computer chips of the world, I didn't see anything else in the world the same again. How you engineer a road, how you engineer a building. And let me tell you, this is so complex and it works so well. These are the best engineers. Hakeem, we appreciate you coming on. We gotta give you a whiteboard next time so you can map all this stuff out for <laughs> Sounds us. Sounds great. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.